One, two, three. This is Dr. Alex Avila and Love University, and we're back. I'm an author, speaker, and psychologist. And every week we talk about how to love yourself, others, and higher nature, how to improve your relationships, your finances, your health, your emotional, psychological being, and also your spiritual mindset. Now, today we have a very interesting topic that actually is very personal to me, and it is called the power of shy. How to use your shyness to get what you want. Now, people may not realize I'm actually a shy person. I've always been shy. And as a child, I would read a lot of books and I would be very internal. And later in life, I studied the idea of shyness. And I realized that shyness can actually be a positive trait. Yet many times people look at it as a negative. Shyness is defined by some people in society as a strong self-consciousness, a fear of being judged, criticized, and rejected. Yet up to 50% of people in the U.S. and even up to 60% in other countries, for example in Asia, consider themselves to be shy. People that are sensitive to being judged and criticized by other people. And some people are what we call situationally shy. Now, you may be shy, for example, in a career. In your uh, relationships, you're not shy. Or maybe in romance and dating, you're shy and not in, in speaking or other performances. But the key is that people see shyness differently. Now, the stigma about shyness is that the term, for example, shy away, that you avoid things. Or when they say that you're shy of something, that means you missed the mark. You didn't quite accomplish it. Sometimes shy people are seen inaccurately as incompetent, as ineffectual, even as rude or standoffish because they don't talk as much, so people get the wrong idea. In the book I wrote, The Gift of Shyness, several years back, I actually reversed that trend, and I talked about shyness as having positive traits. I define shyness as extraordinary sensitivity and deep reflection, someone who is sensitive to others and also thinks deeply. Uh, oftentimes, shy people are good listeners. They're also often gentle, modest, and as a result, they appear approachable. They're not threatening many times. They can have a calming effect, and... They even have deeper relationships and loyalties because it's not easy for them to make friends or relationships. So the ones they have, they tend to keep them and nurture them. So they're very sensitive also and empathetic because they experience the emotional pain of social isolation. Even the term fidgeting, someone that moves their hands and feet a lot, which shy people may do, has been seen as a positive in some ways for cognitive development. In the cognitive load hypothesis, it is indicated that when you offload some of your mental load onto physical movements, like twitching your hands or feet, it actually frees up mental resources for making decisions. So it actually has a positive function. So where does shyness come from? We hear the word shyness. There's a um, research in the biological side that shyness may be genetic. Dr. Kagan, a psychologist, did research with 18-month-old infants. He put them in a room, and he put brightly colored toys in front of their faces or Q-tips dipped in alcohol. Now, you can imagine some of the babies started crying and shaking their little hands and feet. And other babies were very calm, and they didn't react very much. The babies that cried a lot, he called those high-reactive as opposed to non-reactive babies. The high-reactive babies were about 20%, and they tend to be very sensitive to the environment, uh, to any kind of changes. He followed those into early adolescence, teenage years, and he found that a high percentage of the high-reactive children turn out to have what's called sociophobia, which is an extreme form of social anxiety, avoiding people, fearing of being judged and criticized. And these kind of uh, highly sensitive uh, children or babies, even in utero, in the womb, have a higher heart rate. So it's almost as if they have a genetic predisposition to this thing called shyness, sensitivity to the environmental changes. Now, there could also be cultural factors. We know in certain Asian cultures, for example, modesty and quietness, even shyness is considered a positive trait. In Japan, it is said that the nail that sticks out is pounded down. So in some societies, it's considered a more positive trait than being boastful or, or bragging or talking too much. Also, there could be an evolutionary aspect to shyness. For example, in ancient times, to survive, you needed to be part of the pack. If you were ostracized or kicked out of the social group, you could die. So it's very important that you try to please and be part of the social approval. Now, in terms of technology, we have today, we have cell phones. Technology can both help and hurt shy people. It can help them because it makes it easier for them to meet people. They don't have to talk as much. Uh, they can text, they can email, they can meet people online. The disadvantage, though, is that they lose practice with face-to-face -face interaction. Because at some point, let's say you do internet dating, you have to meet a person in person, face-to-face. Uh, -face. And if you don't know how to talk to them, you could have difficulties in shyness. Some people are even phone shy. They're so used to texting, they don't even know how to have a phone conversation. Now, the other thing that we look at in shyness in terms of how it develops is something that I call the actor-observer balance. In our mind and personality, we have a part of ourselves that's called the actor. That's the part that is spontaneous, natural, free-flowing, uh, says what it wants to say. 
And the other part is called the observer or self-observer, the self-conscious, self-critical side that says, you're going to be a fool. Don't say that. You're going to make a mistake. People who are socially successful and content typically have about 80% actor and 20% observer. So 80% of the time, they speak fully, freely and spontaneously. 20% of the time, they're restrained. They pull back so they don't offend people. The shy person has oftentimes 80% of the observer, self-observer, the critic, and 20% of the actor. So they're constantly self-guessing themselves. Should I talk to that person? Should I do this? I'm going to look foolish. They're not going to like me. So we're going to talk about how to reverse that actor-observer in a little bit. But let's talk about the different types of shy. Now, people don't realize that there's actually a difference between introvert and shy. People who are introvert are people that get energy from their own thoughts. They generate power from internal sources. For example, reading, writing, thinking, and meditating. So someone can be introvert, but they can go out and talk to people and not be shy. So we have different kinds of personality types. For example, the shy introvert is someone who is both shy, they're sensitive to being judged and criticized, and they're internal, they're introvert. So they get energy from themselves. Then we have what's called a non-shy introvert, someone that is not really shy, they're not overly sensitive to people's reactions, but they love their quiet time, their space. They might go out to a party and be the life of the party, but then they need to go home and, and recharge, take a hot tub and relax. We also have the shy extrovert, someone who is both shy. So it, it takes a while for them to feel comfortable, but once they're comfortable, they can interact with a lot of people and they love to be externally motivated, socially motivated as an extrovert. And then finally, we have the non-shy extrovert, someone who is not shy, they're not overly sensitive to people's reactions, and they're extrovert. So they like to be out with people and socialize and get external energy. Now, let's say that you're one of the 40 to 50% in the U.S. and even more in other countries that consider yourself to be shy. You are anxious in front of people and you're afraid of being judged or criticized, so you might even pull back. How do you embrace your power as a shy person? How do you uh, demonstrate who you really are? Here are some of the tips that we can use. First of all, embrace your shy self. If you happen to be shy, don't think of it as a weakness or a defect. Think of all the gifts that I mentioned earlier, your sensitivity, your reflection, ability to think deeply being a great listener. And that's such an important thing because many times people talk and they don't listen. So being an attentive listener, reflecting back what you listen to someone else can be a tremendous benefit. People pay therapists a lot of money just to listen to them. Gentleness, modesty. In our society where people brag and boast and everybody wants to be more than they are, the shy person is a refreshing change to that. Also the deep friendships and the loyalty. So recognize all these wonderful traits that you have. And also make sure you dress your best, have your best appearance, work out physically, exercise, have a good diet, take good care of yourself so that you can feel confident, you can feel attractive. Another important thing is to develop mastery over something in life, whether it's art or science, being a craftsperson, being a writer, a teacher, being a caretaker, maybe baking the best cookies, being funny. Whatever it is talent that you have developed that, that's also going to give you social confidence or you can demonstrate something that people like and that is very interesting. Also develop curiosity when you're out in the world. Maybe you look at a waiter or waitress or someone there and think to yourself, what is the past of that person? What have they gone through in life? Maybe they suffered, have some joys. What motivates them? What is your passion? Now you may not say anything to them or maybe you might even ask them a question like, what do you love to do? What is your favorite thing to do? Uh, and it might be a little difficult for a shy person to do that, but it's important to start to think about other people. Having curiosity starts to reverse your actor observer because many times, instead of thinking about yourself, how they're looking at you, you can look hourly and look at them and say, let me find out more about them. I'm curious about this person. At the same time, develop what are called micro interactions, small exchanges of social energy. For example, you walk by someone, you may smile. Now as a shy person, you might think, oh, they might think I'm strange or you say hi to them, but realize that many people want someone to acknowledge them. We live in a society where people are often ignored by other people. So to say hi, smile, or even a compliment, I like that shirt, or that, that looks good on you, and then walk away. So there's no pressure, there's no expectation, you're simply extending positive energy. These little micro interactions will help you build confidence. Now one important thing when you start doing this is to realize that you can forgive yourself if you make a so-called social mistake. One of the terms to think about is the first one doesn't count. So let's say you wanna to talk to someone and you really want to talk to them, but you're too shy and you back off. Instead of criti criticizing yourself, you can say, well, that's just the first one. Or you do talk to someone and maybe they don't respond the way you like. They don't smile at you. They don't appear to like you. You say the first one doesn't count. So that's a warm up. It's an exercise. So by doing this, you start to be self-compassionate and forgive yourself if you do make a social mistake or if you don't approach someone or do something that you want to do. And that helps you eliminate regret because one of the biggest things that shy people have is social regret. I should have done that. I should not have said that. 
and that keeps them down. It keeps them self-critical and they start to avoid social interaction. So forgive yourself, say, I'm going to move on to the next one. It doesn't really matter that much. I'm going to keep improving my social skills. The other thing is to be aware of the actor and the observer. As we mentioned earlier, shy people have 80% observer. That's a lot to have. So you can even get a little notebook and create a little journal where you draw what your observer looks like. Maybe it's a little purple monster with beady eyes and someone criticizing you. And you say to yourself, I am not this observer. This is not me. You might even crumple it up in a piece of paper, throw it in the trash can. You can also draw your, your actor, maybe a charming, attractive, tall, or powerful person that has confidence and that you are that person. Now, the other thing that is very helpful for shy people, and I wrote about this in the book, The Gift of Shyness, is what I call improv therapy, an approach I developed. It combines improvisational acting games, you know, theater games that actors use to develop spontaneity, and a form of self-therapy where you can start to act instead of think. Now, of course, it's good to think and analyze things and be cautious at times, but many times shy people overthink things. Like, should I go up to that person? Should I say this? Should I not? I'm going to look foolish. They're not going to like me. Or I'm going to make a mistake of this job interview or their speech. And they paralyze themselves. They pull back and they get even more nervous the more they think about it. So what improv therapy does, it gets into the acting mind where you are more spontaneous. You jump into something with full confidence and your intuition takes over. Many times you do very well. Now, one of the exercises I like to use, and we've done this before, is called the yes and. Now, Reggie, my producer, I know you've told me before, you're a shy person. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you think you're shy, Reggie? I don't know, just probably just self-esteem, like upbringing or whatever. I had a very, um, uh, I felt like I was very um, impressed upon me that it mattered what other people thought of me or whatever, like seeking validation from others. And only now I'm starting to deprogram from that, but yeah. Yeah, so you've had uh, this kind of programming. and I know you never really had a relationship or dated much and uh, you want to overcome that. We've talked about this before. And part of it, Reggie, I think, is you may overthink things, right? Before you talk to someone, maybe a girl you want to meet or a lady, you think too much about it, right? Yeah. What should I say? And then what is she going to say back? So you may pull back. You know, you may not say what you need to say. So part of it is building this spontaneous energy. So we're going to do what's called the yes and exercise, Reggie. So I'm going to say something. I want you to say yes and, even though it sounds ridiculous or silly, because we're going to build upon that. Many times shy people negate. They, they say, no, I can't. I can't go out tonight because I don't have the clothes or I'm not ready. Uh, and they have reasons and excuses. But we're going to actually do opposite. We're going to give us reasons for success. So Reggie, I just found some purple cheese on Mars. What should I do? You should build a rocket ship so you can get up there and mine it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And when I got up there, it was all purple cheese and also had purple rain. And I heard some crazy music come on. Oh, it sounds like I'm on. Prince didn't die. He just went to live on, on the planet. Exactly. <laughs> and, and we're up there right now, Reggie. And I think you've lost your mind a little bit, but <laughs> okay. So that can be kind of fun, you know? So basically you keep adding on to someone and you build like a little story. The other thing that's also very positive to do as a shy person is to claim your space. Many times shy people, when they walk in a social venue, they, get, they shrink, their body shrinks and they look around nervously. So think of yourself as a, a person that has just bought this, this building, right? As you walk in, you've bought it, and as you walk out, you sold it. So you're a person that has confidence, not in an arrogant way, but you belong in that place. You know, you have something to offer a value, and when you walk in, you walk in with confidence with your head held high. And think of your favorite actor or actress, someone that you admire. Uh, it could be uh, someone from the movie or television, maybe even a hero or a heroine that you know in your personal life, a family member, someone you've seen in the past in history, that had a sense of confidence that walked in a certain way. You might even model that person for a little bit, you know, talk a little bit like them and walk like them. And you don't have to imitate them or be like them, but you can adopt some of those traits that give you that confidence, that social appeal. Another one I like to use is what I call get the fools out. Now, many times shy people are afraid of looking foolish, like fools. So they might even stutter or they might back away from people. So one exercise is paradoxical is that you actually get your fools out. You act like a fool in private. So you go to the mirror and you start jumping up and down and doing something crazy and, and pretty soon you start to have a lot of fun and it takes away a lot of your anxiety because you have a little more confidence. So Reggie, let's try that right now. Let's get up right now. And I want you to act a little bit like a machine, okay? So start making a machine noise and move around a little bit. Okay, beep, beep, beep. Let me hear some sounds. Okay, move around. Jump up a little bit, okay? Like a little bit like a crazy fool. All right, move around. <laughs> okay, look like you're galloping the horse with, with no legs. All right, keep going. <laughs> okay, a lot of noise. A machine. I want to hear that robot machine. 
Okay. I, th I think you're dying, Reggie. You're, you're... Okay. Okay. Okay, Reggie. All right. Either you're making love or you're dying. I'm not sure what you're doing. <laughs> okay. That's, that's good. All right, Reggie. We'll see. How do you feel when you did the full exercise? It felt fun. It felt good. Okay. So you're having a little bit of fun, right? Yeah. So if you can act like a fool in private, when you're in public, you're not going to be that much afraid because you already got your fools out, right? You got the, yeah. those little faux pas out. So you feel better. And finally, one of the things that I think is really important for shy people is to be like the sun, to extend loving energy without expectation. We talk about this a lot, this concept, that if you think of the sun, the sun shines on everybody, right? the young, the old, the attractive, not so attractive, overweight, skinny, everyone. And some people don't like the sun. They cover up, you know, they avoid the sun, but the sun doesn't get mad, doesn't take it personal. Why? Because they're the sun. In the same way, you can shine out to people. You can smile, make eye contact, even say something nice to them. And some people may not respond to you or may not even like you, but you keep shining. You keep extending your loving energy out there. And eventually someone will respond and some people will respond to you. But the key is, it's without expectation. You don't expect them to like you or to get a date or, or a job or any kind of thing. You're just out there being who you are. And the best way to do this, one of the ways is to volunteer for some organization, a humanitarian group, a charity group. We know that shy people have less shyness when they're in structured roles. For example, when you work in a situation, you're in a role that is natural for you. So you have less shyness, you're supposed to do something. So if you can volunteer, help other people, it's a great way to reduce your shyness at the same time, extend loving energy, and you start to do that miracle, which is to reverse the observer into the actor. So instead of being self-conscious and self-limiting, you start to expand your positive energy. In the martial arts and Eastern philosophy, we call it ki or chi energy. So that energy that's within yourself, that intuition, that power, instead of being constrained and tight, becomes flowing outwardly. And you have more confidence and more energy. And you can give more love to others and receive as well. For example, find the shyest person in the room, even shyer than you, and talk to that person. And maybe help them feel better. That's a good way to start reversing your shyness. Also find someone who's non-threatening to talk to. Maybe it's the waiter, the bartender. So you can start to get into a flow of comfort. Now, of course, you don't want to talk to the bartender all night or the waiter, otherwise you won't meet anyone. But it's important to get into the flow of conversation, to practice, because many times in our technological society, people don't do that. We are stuck on our internet and our cell phone. So it's important to start to talk to people live to get practice, no matter who it is. In a sense, so you agree with that, Reggie? I see you're nodding your head. Okay, so find the shyest person you can find today besides you, okay, and go out and do it. And everyone who is shy out there, a lot of people are shy. And again, it can be different situations in dating and in work and speaking. Public speaking is one of the biggest um, areas of shyness. Go out there and little by little start to extend yourself. Smile at people, help people, maybe make a little speech, you know, a little presentation to yourself or to your close friend. So you start to master that and recognizing that you have gifts as a shy person. You have the sensitivity, you have the self-reflection, you have the modesty, the gentleness. These are beautiful traits that can be expressed to others and help you grow as a human being. So love university students, if you want to write in today about the show, if you have questions or comments, if you want to be a guest on the show or have a show idea, please write to us at loveuniversitylove at gmail.com. Visit us at loveuniversity.love. Call us at 310-226-8090. Like us on Facebook at Love University Podcast. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at love, letter U, podcast. So again next time, love university students. Go out there and extend loving energy without expectation, whether you're shy or even if you're not shy. This is a beautiful thing to do because it helps you grow as a human being. It gives you more love and it helps others as well. Until next time, put away your notepads, your iPads, your books, your notes. Class is now dismissed. Dr. Avila. <laughs>